vermin prowls around the streets all hours of the night. Just like an animal. Maybe he's the man. Now don't start any gossip with that, Gringham. Heaven only knows where it might end. Hello, hello, my good friends. Hold up. Pro stream, blah, blah, blah. pro streamer, right here. I don't know why that's doing what it's doing right there. We're fixing it. Still tweaking the things, as you can tell. Let's make sure our mic's working. Oh, where's my mic? There it is. Oh, that looks good. Cool. Just one friend for now, Rack says. Hey, Rackman. You're here early. Oh, I brought something uh, I brought something this way to show you. If you were going to be here today. Let's see. That's not the view. That's the view I wanted. Hold on. Megan's talking to me. <laughs> I can't hear her. What did you say, Megs? Oh, okay. Right. This is that... Textured mug. Well, I'll stop talking for a second while she's mixing the blue up. Should I mute that? Is that too loud for you? Uh, this is the one I did the Play-Doh tool on. I remember you asking, oh, I want to see how that turned out. Well, this is it. Um, I like the black. I probably should find out if you can even hear me <laughs> with that racket going on. Uh, Rex says, cool. So did you put wax resist on the light parts? Uh, no, Megan just wiped this off. And I think it looks great, the black here. But where the red, you see this this part right here where the red gets thin? It's, it's not a very pretty glaze when it does that, unless it's like a motif for the whole thing. Like it doesn't jive with the uh, black. So um, if we did this again, we'd probably just do the whole thing black or maybe the red be, you know, red be thick on the inside like that. But I do like how that turned out. I'm gonna do some more of those. And also right here where the runs happen, the red just is not great when it's thin. But it's always a learning experience. Uh, yeah, tell me the process. So when she glazed this, uh, she basically dipped the black and then wiped this off with a sponge and water so no wax was used there and then here i think it was just dipped real thin on the top probably because it was still wet from the, the black would be my guess i didn't actually glaze this mug but learning experience i'm going to make some more of these and we'll probably just do them solid black or just solid any colors so anyways hey man it's about to be the weekend Looking forward to that. We got date night tonight. Uh, how's the music levels and stuff? Still tweaking stuff. I watched the video yesterday. There were parts of it. And uh, I think we're still getting better. We get a little bit better every day. Actually, it's very cool, actually. Uh, I meant to take my hoodie off before I started. have my clay cut up yet music is pretty ideal right now sweet sweet that's what I like to hear working on it so I did get around to uh, moving some things around this morning you know yesterday I was like crammed up in the corner and knocking the green screen over and uh, all that Rex says the bad part is the song very yeah that's the only thing about this uh, royalty free list it, I noticed that Kind of up and down. Let me know if any of the songs get too loud. I'd rather them be too quiet than too loud. But I scooted down a ways because my, my monitor was like dangerously close to our gas heater. I talked about that a bit yesterday. And uh, it was giving off a plasticky smell, which is never good. I scooted down. These all kind of need to be the same size. And I think 
think we've achieved that. But uh, I also moved my table, so I got like a better table to put my stuff on here. I won't have to get up. I can just reach over, set it down. I need to scoot the green screen down just a little bit more. So I'm cut off this way, but I got plenty of space this way. Um, we're still gonna be tweaking. We're getting there though. Frank said the first day I told you the music was loud. Then the very next song was too low. <laughs> Here's my Megs. Just checking the blue. The blue looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Megs is doing some glazing this morning. Across the room. Right. So this order, I finished the honey pots from yesterday. Finished the shot glasses from yesterday. Finished the mugs I had. I made a gigantic bowl uh, after stream. Uh, today I'm working on a small, these are my big fat pieces, we'll put those to the side. I may do something special with these just for funsies. Uh, this is a small order of flower mugs. Do these today, I'll probably do a few face mugs to go on, to just get a good start on next week's orders. And uh, see what we get to. I believe I need about 10 of those flower mugs. There, that there. What do I do with my rib? Still floating, still floating. Have my rib soaking in the water. Also, I think I'm gonna do a segment today. First, first try on one of those. I'm gonna do a uh, how to center your clay. Do that here in a little while. Rex says, so about the chat. Now when I pull up old streams, the chat is showing up. Oh, it's good to know. I wonder what changed there. I still don't know a whole lot about YouTube. I do know that I'm getting more used to the interface. I'm getting a little faster with things. Uh, this setup is much better than it was. A little bit better every time. That's the goal. And the uh, cameras are better. I'm just gonna keep tweaking it as we go along. I already see little things I could change. Uh, but we're gonna get there. Mug number one. Also, I'm sorry, I'm still coughing a little bit and still sniffling. The pine tree scent outside is very, very strong. Uh, Rag said, not sure. He said something about needing 1K subs for something about live streams, but not for sure. Yeah, they, uh, they, the change that I saw they make on live streams is once you hit 1K, they send your stream out to more people. So I guess you're favored more in the algorithm or whatever. Um, I have not noticed a change in that. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's happening. I fixed this, uh, I also fixed this floppy, this top camera was all like flopping yesterday and I haven't was having to mess with it. Fix that. I put a washer, just a washer was all it needed. So that's fixed. So I should be able, for my putting the faces on the cup streams, take this top camera and just move the arm that way, flip the camera over and that'll be my work camera. And then I'll be using the same face camera. I just kind of screwed it down a little bit. Way, way easier than what I used to do on Twitch. Way. Uh, lock washer or flat washer? Uh, just a flat washer. It's up against plastic, so should keep it pretty locked down. I'm excited. I'm excited about the way things are going. Stream is going well. Join it, and and I'm enjoying not having to finagle as much. Well, I have been finagling a bit, but 
um, like setting setting it up in a more permanent way. It's uh, it's been fun, it's been cool. Setting it up with the intent of just being able to turn the camera on and start talking. That makes me very happy, very happy camper. So, Ragman, you got weekend plans? Do anything cool? We got date night. We're going to uh, go get some, we have a gift card to a local butcher shop. It's supposed to have really nice stuff. Never been there. Personally, I've had meat from there before, but I haven't personally been there. We're gonna go get some nice steaks, probably. And uh, we're gonna go to the home improvement store, grab a few things. I gotta get some new lights for outside of our house. I gotta go get a new uh, door lock set. I gotta get, what else? I needed one more thing. I probably need to get some deck screws. I gotta replace some boards. We're gonna do some home improvement this weekend. Rack says something I said yesterday. The next time I'm at the house of my other Potter friend, I have to take a picture of the mug collection he has on display. Yes, you should. I'd like to see that. You know, I don't have a very impressive mug collection. I probably should. But I don't. Megs needs something. You're about to drill? <laughs> Megs is about to do some drilling. Guard your ears. <laughs> Actually, I can't really hear it well. Rex is, his is mugs from other potters mostly. Yeah, I don't, I have a couple that but I don't use them. I just have them sitting around and they're I really don't have a much of a pottery collection at all. Most of the mugs that we do use, or a lot of the mugs we do use, have like little blemishes or imperfections or S cracks or that kind of thing. So we just use like the cast offs. Uh, I did make us a nice set for the house though. Let's see. Kinda, I did my first mug. It was kind of a short, fatty mug, but I need them to be a little bit um, more tall. These need to be somewhat consistent. Uh, they're going to a shop that has an online store. So, and they just like reuse the same picture, so they need to be fairly close. I think this playlist is kind of growing on me. Hopefully none of the music will become copyrighted in the future. That's always a risk. You post this content and then the artist copyrights their stuff like a year later down the road. It's the benefit for, of doing a, like a paid service. But you gotta keep paying for it. Or you have to mute those videos. Well, business copyright. I get it. I understand it. can cause some issues. Rack says one thing he does that's kind of unique is he makes some slab mugs. That is kind of unique. I have never made slab mugs. Uh, I've never done any other, I don't think I've ever made anything but pottery wheel mugs. I never did remember the last thing I wanted to get from the home improvement store. Maybe I was thinking about paint for the green screen, green screen paint, but I'm gonna hold off on that. I actually hooked the green screen to the thing that it's supposed to be on with the straps that it's supposed to have. Like yesterday, I just had like draped over something <laughs> and that's why I knocked it down. But it's all clippity clipped all tight now and it's fine. I'm just gonna keep it. 
how it is for now. Although it'd have a little more space if I did paint the wall. I don't think I want to commit to painting my wall green though. So, I think that was the other Lowe's thing. So date night, I hardly know how to begin. we're gonna go to Lowe's, get some, whoa, my bat almost went flying off. This is one of the ones that's kind of wallered out. And then we're gonna go on a, uh, a little hike, a little walk in the park. So the weather's supposed to be real nice today. Rack says our church even bought a green screen during COVID because of all the vids we were doing. Yeah. Uh, my Megs was doing a Sunday school class during COVID from home. Uh, I don't think we ever used the green screen for that, but we did use like all my streaming gear, uh, use the, the condenser mic. Uh, I think we just used one camera. Rex says it sounds like a really fun date night. Not just a Lowe's date. Yeah, it's more than just a Lowe's date. And then Saturday, we're gonna get up and do the home projects together. It's always fun to work together. We're gonna work on getting those lights hung up, getting the deck boards replaced, getting the door, uh, the door lock fixed, getting, that's probably gonna be the day right there. I also have a washer I need to repair, but I'm waiting on the part for that. It's not coming in until sometime next week. It did not ship yesterday. I was kind of disappointed by. Also looking forward to a day off. I haven't taken a Saturday off in a while. So that'll be nice. Change of, change of pace. Look forward to it. I like doing all those little outside home, home projects. All right then. Let's do one more. And then I'm gonna do the segment, how to center your pottery. Doing it live. Hopefully I can explain it in a way that makes sense to people. I did a bad job. I'll just try again on the next stream. I'm still uh, getting used to sitting here and jib jabbing again. I've been way out of practice with that. It's only, only been like five years. Rag says, so you're finally caught up enough now to take a day off? That's cool. Not really, but I need to make myself take a day off. I got some stuff that's kind of piled up at the house I just have to take care of. I have, I still have the back order and I have the work, but I also have, have the house stuff that really needs to be handled. So. And a date night. Last date night we had, I woke up and came into work. We need to have a and Mags need some time to hang out together. So, the clay I used for this one was a little bit less, so to compensate, this mug's just gonna be a little bit thinner. It's a slightly thinner mug, but it'll end up being about the same size and holding about the same amount. I don't measure my clay. I just kind of eyeball it when I cut it up. And I compensate for the size. It's like if I need to make it the same size, it's just a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter weight mug. That's fine. Weighing everything is just an extra step that is a no for me. Ain't nobody got time for that. I know some other potters would be like, that's blasphemy. Okay, commence the segment. Rackman, I'll probably 
ignore you for a minute while I'm doing this. Or I probably won't ignore you. I'll just cut it out later. Uh, so, how to center your clay. If you're here, you're probably wondering. Because you typed in the YouTube and you're like, how do I center my clay? Clack, 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 clack. Should get my keyboard and smack on it with my dirty clay hands. That'd be sad. Prop time! <laughs> Prop acquired. Let's do that again. I bet you're wondering, and you've typed into the YouTube, how to center my clay. I'm glad you asked. Well, I'm glad you found me. I'm gonna show you. I learned this, well, I kinda had to learn this on my own. <laughs> I had a pottery teacher in college, but he was more the hands-off kind of guy. And he was like, yeah, he did some demos for us and just showed us, but he didn't really explain things very well. So I'm going to do my best. And also explaining this, you're, you're kind of explaining a feel, like a feel kind of thing. Centering your clay is not something you can just give people the steps and they're just going to know how to do. It's more of like a feel kind of feeling. A feeling of being in the middle, a feeling of, it's, I'd, I'd more describe it as like not centering, so it's not so much centering as being still, like learning to be still on the pottery wheel. So, um, you see how the sponge is just, yeah, that's not a good example. Let's get some clay on the wheel, step one. Now also when you're starting out, a good thing to have in your pocket is a good bat. So this, this is not a good bat. Um, use the maybe the plastic ones and also I found when I was starting out that using a completely dry bat helped the clay to stick a bit better for me I don't have to do that now I can get them stuck down uh, more easily but if you use a completely dry bat that'll help you get going all right starting with a ball of clay it would also be helpful for you kind of something more uniform than what I'm going to use here I typically make mine about like that as long as this is this surface here is kind of concave and you're not slamming like this like this down on the wheel see that that would leave a little hole between the bat and the clay so you don't want to do that you want to start with a round uh, it doesn't have to be flat but kind of like a the top of a cue ball something like that BAM all right as you can see our clay is not in the center. I got a just a top-down view here. Ooh, fancy. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, get our hands nice and wet. So your hands need to stay wet. Like as wet, the wetter your hands can be, the better. Because if it starts sticking to that clay, that clay is going to be pulling your hands around, and that's going to make you pull off center. So if you keep your hands wet, that's great. Uh, first thing, good push down. Okay. All right, clay is nice and stuck down. And next next thing we're going to move into is called coning. So we're going to make the clay go up and the clay go down. Uh, hang on just a second. My Megs was looking at me. Did you need some help? No. She's just watching me. <laughs> just being an audience. All right. So coning, uh, this is where we're, we're going to take the clay up into a tower. I used to say with the... Uh, in the kids' classes, we're making a tower. Uh, the technical name for it with pottery is coning. Uh, and you could call it all kinds of things. You could probably call it some dirty things because it does look a little questionable. Um, all right. So coning, this one's, this is pretty straightforward and, and I had an easier time doing this than I did taking it back down, which we'll do here in a minute. But you're basically just pushing your hands together you're at in a shape, kind of like that. Wide at the bottom, narrow at the top. Uh, but the purpose for this is just to get all that clay spinning in the same direction. You know, the more homogenous it is all the way through, the better you're gonna do with your throw. Um, this can be done multiple times. I usually do it one time. Um, and also, at the bottom here, 
you got to focus on the compression here because that clay needs to be tight, compressed, all spinning in the same direction. Uh, that will prevent later on down the road if you're drying and, and pulling. So if you're drying a little fast or whatever that, if it's if the clay particles are compressed, you're going to have less trouble with cracking and stuff down the road. So compression on the bottom, and all right, let's get back up into our cone. So there's my twice cone. That's what it looks like with coning. All right. You might be here and that's okay. If you are here while you're at the top of your cone, just see if you can grab a hold and make your hand still. Okay. It's about being still more than it is about being in the middle. I can move this clay over here. Uh, let's go top down. All right. So watch this. I can be still over here. I can be still down here. I can be still over here. So what I'm not doing is letting that clay drive me around. This is this is what most people do when they start out pottery right here. But once you can learn to go from this, see, I'm not doing that myself. The clay's just robbing me around. Once you can do that, go from that to this. That's how you center right there. Okay, so it's it's more it's about your hands being still. Uh, let's go to both views. So this part right here after coning. So the way I like to envision this is I'm like a machine. He's more machine now than man. No, it's, it's kind of like it, but you think about a wood lathe. So you, on a wood lathe, the, the wood's turning over like this. And then you have the guard coming across and you lay the tool on top of that guard. And the uh, the tool in, is inherently just still by nature of the way it is. So that's what your left hand is if you're right, a right-handed person. The wheel spinning the op opposite direction if you're a left-handed person. Um, and there's a reason for that. I guess I could go into, into that. So I'll do that after I pull the wall. We'll talk about that. Help remind me to do that, right, man? Okay. So your left arm is the guard on your imaginary machine. If I can keep this arm still, if this is my stillness, if this is my stillness, this left hand, that clay's got to be centered. If I'm not moving, that clay will be centered if I push it down into this hand. So, see, all right, just the left hand moving over. See? Still. And actually, I just knocked it too hard. All right, so I'm going to push down and into that left hand. Got it. It's a little bit off still, but we just go back in, grab a little bit more, and now we're there. That's the center piece of clay right there. All right, let's do another, another time. Then we're gonna turn this into a mug. All right, just the one hand to demonstrate the guard. Get a little water on there. All right. All right. Back off center. I'm using my guard. It's all about this this one hand. Your right hand. Your one hand is pushing down and in, and this other hand is staying still. And that's all there is to centering. It is crucial when you're starting your pot. Like the more centered it is, the better that pot's gonna be. Hands down, absolutely. All right. Now, oh, this is the other thing I was gonna show you guys. Last bit on centering. So, another illustration. Take that out, because I didn't wanna make a hole there just yet. Just about to start making a mug. Another illustration on being still rather than being centered. All right. So I can put this thumb in the middle. See? Oh, I'm going to, I'm kind of wrote just, it's kind of carrying me around. If I put this thumb like right in the center, it's not, I mean, it's going to leave a, an odd hole, an odd, you know, oblong, weird shaped hole. It's just carrying me around. So instead of starting right in the middle, 
I'm gonna come off to the side and I'm gonna focus on being still. Right there. Should call it stillering, not centering. And going on out. And now it's time to make our mug. And we'll go more into the process on another stream. Another day. Thus concludes my segment on centering. Thanks for watching. And return! Rackman says you should do this a few times, then you can pick your best take. <laughs> yeah, I could. We'll do it again another day. Oh, my nose is itching so bad. I'm trying not to scratch my nose while I was doing that. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, oh, traffic crazy. I need to hire an assistant that scratches my nose for me. And this is another short, fat mug because I played with this clay so much. If, when you play with it, it absorbs the water. It makes it all floppy and... Yeah, or sometimes it's like floppy and gritty at the same time. So... I said that before I knew how long it would take. Oh, <laughs> Rex says, I said that before I knew how long it would take. I'm gonna read that chat out. I'm supposed to break those bad habits. It's bad Twitch habits. Maybe I can cut that into something serviceably watchable. Maybe, maybe it'd be helpful to people. Hope so. If not, I'll probably cut it later and be like, oh, I should have said that. Oh, man. My uh, my pottery teacher in college was not the explaining kind of guy. And it was more like just have some, have infinite clay, you guys, which, not complaining, that was amazing and very helpful for learning. Have all this clay, go nuts. Learn. Here's a demo. Um, but that explanation of centering is just kind of how like I picture it in my own mind. It's kind of like a it's a it's a, it's a feel kind of thing. It's like that feeling when you're like you get on a bike and you go down a hill. It's like you can hold it up. It's the same exact concept. Like once you learn how to do it, once you catch the uh, catch the knack for it. So, it's like, it is, it really is like riding a bike. It, things get a little bit different too as you, um, as you get more clay. So there's different, kind of different techniques involved there in which we'll go ahead, we'll go into that one these days. Uh, I should have talked about that too. The amount of clay, it's, it's pretty important when you're first starting out. To use the right amount you don't want to get too much but also you don't want to get too little maybe i can clip that in i think the perfect amount is about the size of a tennis ball baseball right in there about a pound a little less than a pound somewhere around, around in that area so well back to the both view Oh. Came up too high. It's all right. I fixed it. You guys see me mess up? Or I should say you guy. <laughs> I think it's all of you watching right now, Ragman. You guys in the future watching this after the fact. Did you guys see me mess up? If you did, leave a comment. Nose is itching again. Ah. So, oh. I got this will be number six going on the table. We've been going for. Oh man, I don't even know. I don't have my stream timer up. Got my clock though. 
Go another 25, 30 minutes. I quit a little earlier today. Just to move, gotta move the day along. Gotta leave early today. It's date day. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. All right, I said I'd make something a little out of the ordinary. Let's do that. Let's do another segment. How to make a something. What do you guys want me to make? I got a... I could do a bowl or a... Eh, bowl's too plain. I could do a little bud vase. I can make a... Uh, a vase vase. This would be good. I think I'll do a little bud vase. Those are fun. I made one of those yesterday. I'm gonna post a video, a, uh, a short video later today. Bud vase. Let's do a bud vase. Do I want a big one or a little one? I think they're, I'll do the big one. This is one of those forms that I don't have a ton of practice at, so it's always a little bit of a challenge to, uh, a little more of a challenge, certainly, than making mugs. Maybe make some of these for Mother's Day this year. I think I go get the one that I made yesterday. Show you, show you guys the finished product. Well, it's not glazed yet, but it's uh, got a face on it. It's drying out. So same setup as a mug. I would set up, so if I was doing a bowl, my setup would be different. I'd have a little bit of lower, it'd be lower down and a wider base starting out. This would be the same as a mug. And we're looking to make a cylinder just about as straight up and down as we can manage. So when opening right here, we're not gonna come out too far. Very narrow. I'm gonna kind of make it come up and in to begin with, because that's where we're gonna end up later. Notice I'll kind of stretch it out with my hand because I got it in narrower than the width of my hand. don't want to take it too thin to begin with so that's another tip on these so like from here here to here you don't want to take it too thin because as you go in the thicker this is the less likely it is going to be like fold up on itself so you'll, you'll see that we'll probably fold up a little bit a little bit's normal all right so we need to kind of work the base a bit i think it's all right i might got it a little thin but i think it's workable And another good idea, let's go ahead and take the water out before you close it up. A lot of times I'll leave it in on these because you can always pour it out, but I like taking it out and checking the bottom too, give it a little compression. All right, go ahead and trim the bottom because we're definitely not going to be down in there after we close it off. Pre trim that. Good. All right. Now we're gonna close it up. Nice and slow and easy. You don't want to get too heavy-handed with this, because this can uh, collapse on you if you do. Alright, if you look carefully, you can see where it's kind of folded up on itself a bit. That's why we're kind of up, down, up, down, up, down, because of that folding over. It's all right. Um, we can either cut that off or just be happy with it. Alright, so now, use that extra clay we left to make the neck longer and more delicate, more elegant, because that's what we like to see in a bud vase. I think they're the best when there's high exaggeration from 
the base to the top. And we're gonna go back for a little more of that exaggeration here in just a minute once I get this uh, neck a bit thinner, thinned out. All right, got that where I want it. I might put this back on the wheel later and cut, cut the top more flat, but I'm gonna leave it for now. All right, so the last bit, to give it that delicate bud vase look and make it really, really thin on the inside for like a single, uh, single flower, like a rose. We want that, we want that to be very narrow for that reason. So when you close something off like that, here at the top, this this area right right down below the opening, it's a very common place to develop an S crack in drying. To prevent that from happening, you need to have pressure from both sides to compress the clay. So you need to come in from the outside and the inside and compress that down. Because if you put it, do it all from the outside, you are very likely to develop a little crack right there. Let's use my little finger there. And uh, all right, let's see what kind of view we got from the side. It's our bud base. I'm not gonna go any farther with that. In fact, I need I have to get that later, but what I'm going to do is run my little wooden tool down in there and I'm going to kind of clean the slurry, clean the edges off down there because we might have a little bit of, of a burr like right, right there at the top. Clean it up. Might give that to my mom for Mother's Day. You want a bud vase for your mom for Mother's Day? Hit me up. I'll be your bud vase guy. I'm your bud vase, Huckleberry. No further details available at this time. There she is. I'm gonna put a face on that one. Cute little face for a cute little bud vase. Segment number two. Completed. Let's see how that one does. Onward, back to mugs. I think I needed eight flower mugs, and I got six on the table. Two more of those bad boys. Kind of a bigger piece of clay right here. That's all right. It'll just be a little bit thicker. Thick mugs are not bad mugs. Unless they're just like really, really thick. I think the thing that makes a, a mug not great or kind of noobish is like the thickness of the bottom more than anything. Uh, but your walls match the bottom and it's a little on the thicker side. That's all right. It's insulation. It's like those Waffle House mugs. There's no those Waffle House mugs. They're like, those are just disappointingly tiny mugs. but they're like super thick. Hmm. Kinda want some more coffee now. Thinking about getting a refill at Waffle House made me, uh, maybe one more, want a refill here, right now. That's probably the next thing I need to do as far as like, fixing bad habits that I have. I drink way too much coffee. Way too much coffee. That one is for another time though. It's about the same height as the other mugs now, but it's just like slightly thicker. So I compensate for the, the different weight the weight variances in my clay. Too lazy to measure things. No, it's not really laziness. It's more efficiency. Um, that's kind of 
like a big factor in my work. To be able to do this at a level to sustain myself and my family, I often have to play with that balance between craftsmanship and efficiency. So there are things that I've done along the line to tilt it, or to maintain the quality, but to increase efficiency. So one of those was I stopped mixing my own clay because that was a, not really saving me that much money. And uh, you know, honestly, the stuff you can buy pre-mixed is as good, if not better. Uh, I had I did I have run into some troubles with that through the years so like I was using a different clay manufacturer and they were having some quality control issues that happens from time to time that has even happened with this uh, the one that I use currently I mean they've had bad bashes they'll get like a new employee or something that doesn't really know exactly what they're doing and um, I've got some clay in there right now that's um, that they mixed it so dry it's so hard to throw with and also they, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's got, it's just, they use the wrong grog in it or something. It's got like some really coarse particled stuff in it. It's just like, it's so like on the rims, it'll, uh, it leaves rough, rough rims basically. And so and when you knock those particles out, it, it leaves an empty spot. So it's just not ideal. Uh, so I stopped mixing clay stopped pugging clay. I used to have a lot more reclaim. I used to have days that, I mean, I just couldn't throw for the life of me and I'd have so much wasted clay. I just have to smash stuff, but uh, nowadays I don't even use the pug mill anymore. Uh, don't keep a reclaim. I probably could keep a reclaim because this here in my splash pans can be reclaimed, but I don't at the moment. It's pretty much the only waste. I have a little bit of waste with the extruder sometimes. If I leave clay in the extruder and it dries out. Uh, so another thing I did to increase efficiency was I, I don't trim my things like most potters would trim their things. I learned a trick. It was I actually learned it from a, a older woman they did pottery on one of my first start shows, first craft shows. Um, I looked at her work and I, I saw her footer and it looked a little bit different. And instead of like putting her mugs back on the pottery wheel and waiting on them to be leather hard and trimming them that way, uh, she just, as, as the clay was wet, she just pressed a footer in with her finger, like did a round footer and then uh, carved her signature in. I was like, huh, I could do that. So. Uh, I ended up making a uh, signature stamp out of plaster. So I press a footer in and sign the mugs at the same time by pressing the clay into that. And I'm manipulating the clay while it's still fairly wet anyway, so I put faces on everything and I put stamps and, and all that. Um, so that was a move towards efficiency. Hey, Duncan's here. Hey man, how's it going? Welcome to you, sir. Top of the morning to you. And Duncan says it is beautiful outside. Sitting on the porch, enjoying it. Yeah, man. Me and my Megs took us a walk a little while ago. It is a lovely day. And we're going to take another walk a little later on in the day. And Duncan says morning, ladies and gents. Top of the morning. Welcome to you, sir. Glad you're here. You got weekend plans? Duncan, what you been getting into lately? You've usually got something going on that you're doing, playing a game or something, or you're watching anything or reading anything. I'm kind of between things right now. My son has been playing through the camp, the single player campaign on Smash Bros. And I've been kind of like messing around with the Switch a little bit now, but I hadn't settled on anything. I played a little bit on the Xbox last night. I turned on, uh, Skate 3, it's older, older skate game for the 360. But I just kind of didn't really get into it. The TV 
in our bedroom has developed a problem. <laughs> it's the switch is on the side panel, so the power button works on the side, on the side of the TV. I have no idea what has happened to the remote. It it was moved, it was here at the studio, and it was back home, and it's it's gone. This TV's old, and it's been all over the place. But anyways, so the buttons on the side they change functions, like they change what they do. So the input button does not change the input. It often lowers the volume. The menu button raises the volume. The volume button uh, brings up the menu. It's, it's so odd, I've never had a TV do that before. So to get the volume to turn down, you just gotta have to figure out what button it is for that day. And you're more likely, uh, and when you finally find it, you have to just stand there and hold it and it'll eventually very slowly creep its way down uh, so it's set the volume is set and i try just try not to mess with it it's set okay for us to like watch a movie something like but it's a little bit loud like for me to play it and the, if the kids are trying to go to bed it's it's not ideal for me to be playing it it's too loud <sighs> Time for a new TV. I think what I'll do, I've got kind of got the stream set. I'm using two screens right here. I may take one of these, swap for it. But as I said, I'm kind of in between things. Duncan says, not much of anything at the moment. I actually just started playing World of Warships again yesterday. Hey, I think that's what you were playing uh, when I was on Twitch. I remember you talking about that. I was playing a little WoW Classic, Seven Days to Die, until a couple of months ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm off my WoW kick now. I've had my fix. WoW Classic was fun while it lasted, and Season of Discovery was cool, but I'm kind of just like, meh, I'm done with WoW for now. We are gonna uh, we'll move on to bigger and better things. I almost started a new Stardew Valley farm last night think about that or maybe dragon quest builders too i think i'm gonna get into a switch game uh the thing about that though is my son has been playing the smash bros campaign and i really like being able to just suspend the game so we basically be like turning each other's games off could just make him play on his own switch he's got a switch light but he's been playing on the uh, on the tv on mine. I don't know. Maybe I'll just not play games for a while. I haven't really found anything I'm interested in, in a bit. What's an odd pause in the music? Alright, we got eight that was eight mugs. Alright. I need to go have a look at my notebook. Hey, I'll just keep making mugs because I do know that I'll need more than eight mugs to keep me going the rest of the afternoon. Probably do some like mustache mugs or something for my next order. I know I've got a an order of face mugs that I gotta finish next, so I'll do that. But, they don't have to be as consistent. In fact, it'd be better if they were not. Get some tall skinny ones and short fat ones and whatnot. I think these are pretty good. Do I have eight? Good one, two, three. I could do a few more that, are, that match a little bit better. That's what I'll do. That one's perfect. That'll do. I don't run out of table space too. I really like the new setup. Having this table right here, don't have to get up. Don't have to worry about kicking stuff. It is ideal. Hey, you guys that are watching after the fact, if you stuck with me this long and you have enjoyed, thank you so much. Uh, if you would kindly consider subscribing, hitting the like button, notifications and all that stuff. Greatly appreciate it. Also, if you have pottery questions, or if you'd like to see me make something, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, I do have some big bowls I need to make very soon. I'll probably be doing those next week, so next week sometime. 
Big guy, gigant, enormous bulls. You know, I have two of those on order. I'll probably make three in case I have issues with one of them. The bigger stuff. I don't know if it's like this for all potters, but for me, they have I have a more of a loss rate on the big stuff because it's a little more difficult to control the drying. I actually just set them out on my concrete floor, and that's another thing. They might accidentally get kicked. Uh, <laughs> big bowls, Duncan says. Big bowls of clay. They are not bowls of steel, bowls of clay. But yes, if you're watching after the fact and you want to see me make something, ask. And ye likely will receive. There are some things I cannot make. Probably. There are some things that I probably have never tried to make. I think I've made most of the things, though. So, stream plan for next week. I think what I'm going to be doing... now starting next week I'm gonna do a Monday Wednesday Friday schedule and I'm probably gonna go more like um, <laughs> yeah Duncan Duke Nukem I got balls of steel that's right balls of steel uh, balls of clay that's what I'm gonna go to a Monday through or Monday Wednesday Friday schedule next week tentatively and that'll give me some time to kind of edit some things on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which I'd like to do. That's the next tweak to the YouTube channel. Hey, still figuring this stuff out. That's another thing if you're watching this after the fact and you have suggestions for me, leave a comment. Guys, I'm basically brand new. I mean, I've been posting stuff on YouTube for about a year, but it's just shorts and it's just the stuff that I have already been making for Instagram and. Facebook. On the long form things, I'm still learning. It's like, I, I definitely need to still, I gotta tweak this camera a little bit. I gotta scoot my green screen down. Ah, there are improvements. But you know what? We're gonna get there. Things have already improved. Alright. It is 9.46. Almost gym time. And I got space if I uh, cram things together a little bit. I got space on my table for two more mugs. So that's what I'm gonna make. And then we're gonna call it a week. It has been a good week. I thoroughly enjoyed streaming this week on YouTube. It's really good to be back. I miss this a lot. Need to do that more like there so you guys can see it. And do we have mugs all? Eight of them. Yeah, we got eight. About the same size. It's good. Made a couple of them a little bit oddball. Oh. But I have 10 now, so. Good. God. <sighs> Duncan says a whole bunch of gem emojis. Yeah, man. Today is a circuit training day. I, I do circuit training pretty much every day, but this is especially circuity circuit training. It's a lot lighter weight, higher, very high rep on this stuff. Uh, yesterday I did legs, and it is my least circuit trainee thing. It was a heavy leg day. It was brutal. 
I'm kind of waddling a little bit today, <laughs> but it's okay. At least I can stand up without a crane. It's getting easier. It's getting easier to do that. So I had taken a pretty, really long hiatus from the gym. We were really sick between October and December, and plus work just gets crazy. <laughs> Duncan says noodle legs, yeah. We had taken a very long, uh, or I had taken a, a long gym hiatus just because of the sickness. Been back at it for over a month now. I started the end of, I think like December 27th, something like that. It's my first day back. Hit my stride with it though. So it's getting better. That first leg day back. Pretty rough. Actually, it was the first one wasn't too bad because I knew going into it, I kind of took it easier. But the uh, the second one, that was the bad. That was the one that had me limping to work, <laughs> moaning to stand, moaning when standing up. That kind of thing. I got a little soreness today, but it's not as bad as that. All right, let's do one more. One more for the road. Looking forward to streaming next week. I think we'll probably land, we'll be doing a, uh, another wheel stream Monday. We're just gonna see, we're gonna just see how it goes. I'm not sure if we'll be doing any face, face streams next week or not. So I'll probably do wheel stream Monday. Probably we'll stream Wednesday based on what I have. And then a maybe a face stream Friday. Alright. Last one. But we're just gonna work on uh, keeping on, keeping on getting better. I think our quality improved. Next week I need to work on thumbnails. I've used the same thumbnail that I just like half-ass put together with a. Uh, I just took a picture of my phone uh, on a uh, grabbed a mug off of the Etsy shelf. Take a picture of it, and then I just use the editor on my phone to make the thumbnails. We're going. We're going to see if we can make those better. I know I can do better with those, and vary vary them. I think. I think that's what I'll do first. I'll take multiple pictures and vary. Maybe vary the work that's on there. Maybe do some that have me pictured holding a mug or something. I need to do that, and I need to do some research on. Uh, well, just how to make better videos and the search engine optimization. Learn some more about that, about tags. I just get get more of a deep dive. So the first week has been just like, okay, let's get it going. Let's get it set up. Let's set it up in an efficient way where I could just sit down and start streaming. And just start putting stuff up. And that's, that objective has been accomplished. We're there. So now it's time to just make it better. And that's going to be the goal moving forward. I uh, hope we can get there. And I think we can. Duncan says thumbs up. Me too. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Two dirty clay thumbs up. All right, this is my last mug. Duncan Man, Rack Man, if you're still there, hope you guys have fantastically phenomenal weekends and you guys watching this after the fact. Thanks for sticking around and watching watching the stream. I hope you come back. I hope you come back and join the chat and uh, come visit with us sometime. Chit chat and uh, keep me company while I'm working. Be awesome. Glad to have you. Smooth this off there. We are done. You guys 
Have fantastically phenomenal evenings, weekends, afternoons, and whatever it is for you, whatever's coming up for you next. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good time. Duncan, I'll catch you later, man. See you guys Monday. Bye.